Hi, I'm Pete, and welcome to Just a Few Acres Farm. Well, I couldn't resist. The manure spreader is all painted, including the outsides. All except for the mechanical business up front here because I didn't degrease that. Maybe on a nice day I'll pull it out and pressure wash it and degrease it and paint that too. I found decals for it. They're not exactly the same as what was on it, but they're close enough. Oh. Oddly, they're being shipped from Bulgaria. Directly from Bulgaria. <laughs> Fortunately, these paddles are available all over the place on the internet. I think all you need is a CNC machine and you're in the manure paddle business. The nice thing about working on a manure spreader is if something doesn't come out quite perfect, you can always say to yourself, well, it's just a manure spreader. Oh, come on. I want to take a look at these wheel hubs and see what they need in terms of bearings and seals. I gotta clean them up. They have grease circs in them to grease the wheel bearings and they've been well greased over the years. I guess that's not a bad thing. Yeah, that seal's bad. Oh my god. I got most of the grease out of these. Let's see what we're working with here. That's that bad seal. But we still got to get the seal retainer out of here. Well, you're a pain. Get out of there. If one hammer doesn't work, then double down. That's the, that's part of the seal, <laughs> or was. This is the inner cone bearing in here, which should just pull out. Here's the other hub. Everything's cleaned up. Races look fine. All four of them, two on each wheel. The bearings all look fine too. So I have to get one new hub cap and a set of seals. I've been sitting here thinking about this. I'll show you. This is the bearing that the apron shaft rides in. It doesn't have to have balls or rollers to be a bearing. It can be this. It's just the surface that the shaft rides in and this bearing fits into this plate 
like that. And there's a key here to lock it in, but over time it's become so worn that it doesn't lock anymore. You can see where it's worn right on the keyway and then it's grooved around here where it's worn in and then also the hole in here has all worn out. This is the apron shaft that it fits onto and you can see where it's worn where the bearing rides in it. I'm not too worried about this wear. If it's a little loose that's fine. Especially since I can't pull the shaft. I tried pulling the shaft and it's stuck in the gearbox which is okay. If I could pull it out we could weld it up and turn it back down to original diameter. But I really don't think that this being a little loose matters all that much because the apron chain is pulling on it in a consistent that way direction and it's not like it's rattling around in there. It doesn't turn all that fast. It turns very slowly as the apron comes back. Here's a view from the rear of the spreader. Maybe you can see a little bit better now. The sprocket, the new sprocket that's on its way here is going to go right here. This plate goes on like this and this bearing goes in like this and then there's a washer or a bushing that goes in here to isolate it from the sprocket and the shaft turns very very slowly and then there's another bushing washer that goes in here and then a cotter pin and the question is can I just weld this? Both these parts are replaceable you know you can still buy replacements for them so if that failed I could always get replacements but I don't see why I couldn't weld it. There's no reason that this needs to move in and out like this. It can lock right in there and everything will be fine. I don't, the shaft is still free to move in and out with expansion or drift or whatever happens to it. It should be all right. It's on there good. I'd call that a win. I'm a little worried about these tires. Of course I knew they were old and bald and they had some cracking in them. I might be able to live with that but this really worries me here. I sure would hate to get a flat tire with a load of manure on. They don't match which is really not that big a deal. They're the same size. I'm really not sure what to do. This is a 9 inch ride wide rim. And that's a 9 inch wide rim. At least the rims match. You never know.
rust converter on this apron bearing that I welded up. These hubs really don't have much of any rust on them, so I'm just going straight paint. They're harvesting dry corn next door. Gotta be neat about it now. Groovable. Does that mean you can cut more tread in them? I don't know. Metal cord should cut with this blade. I could have taken them to a tire shop right down the road, but where's the fun in that? There's the steel belting in the bead of the tire. Whole bunch of metal strands, really strong. This is day number three morning. We had a hard freeze last night and it's pretty cold and windy today. I'm all set up in the machinery barn here to cut tongue and grooves in the lumber for the deck. <laughs> cut the tongues first, I'll cut them all, and then I'll cut the grooves. This is a tongue and groove bit on my router. It's got two cutters on it and then it's got two bearings in it. And in this position, it cuts the tongues, and then if I move it down, then I can cut the grooves with the same bit. In each board, I find the best face, and I mark it up. That way, the tongue and grooves will align the same on all the boards.
tongues are all caught and now I need to adjust my bit and I want to bring the bottom cutter up to match the tongues that I cut and that bottom cutter is going to cut the grooves. Let's try that. I'll cut a little piece here. Then we can see how the test fits on the tongue. Looks good. Everything's tongue and groove. We'll fit a couple boards together and see how it works. Looks good. I got four new sprockets, two fronts and two rears. New rear, old rear. <laughs> the old ones were quite worn. first sprocket it was hung up on the on the sprocket bearing area there but when I did the final whack it slid way over here I'm not going to put the set screw in this until after I get the apron on so I can adjust it back and forth before locking it down. I just use grease on the inside. You probably know I don't like never sees of any variety. I never use it. Opinions may vary. Now then, a little known fact about manure spreaders. The boxes on them are not perfectly rectangular usually. They're wider in the back than they are in the front so as a load of manure moves back it's coming into a gradually wider spreader box. I have measured this one front and back and it is a half inch wider in the back than it is in the front and as you can see by the square here see the gap there tapers down to nothing there it is not square it's a trapezoid. The other thing we want to check before installing wood is the relationship of the new sprockets to the wood deck. The old deck was a half inch thick. This is three quarter inch thick pressure treated. And it looks like it's gonna ride fine. The chain's gonna ride up on this low spot right here on the sprocket. So we don't need to do anything. It'll ride up here a little bit and that'll be good. And at the front, you wanna make sure that you're not into the sprocket adjustment zone here for the idler sprocket. So this wood will just come even with the end of this and I can probably take the belt sander and chamfer this a little bit or slope it down if we run into a situation where the sprocket's wanting to push the chain down as it comes up over the corner of the wood. To deal with that taper, I'm gonna start in the middle instead of on one side. And I did some calculations and figured out if I put a joint right in the center, the joint between two boards, I'll wind up with good edges, not small cuts. This one needs to be 30 and a quarter. And this one needs to be 30. And I started with the straightest board that I had. So we have a good reference line. This is a one quarter trailer deck screw. It's Self-tapping partially, you gotta drill a pilot hole and that'll tap its own threads. And they're made for putting lumber on trailers. Now I'm board number two and then we can put the second screw in board number one. I'm gonna need a hammer. Yep. 
hand. That's a hammer, right? I think it is. I have a shocking YouTube confession to make. <sighs> These screws, not rated for pressure treated lumber. When I ordered them, I thought that they were, but then I looked at the fine print. And then I realized I used these same screws in the chicken wagon 10 years ago in pressure treated, and that's stored outside year round. It's got chicken poop in it, and it's holding up fine. So then I wasn't as worried about it. Hillary came to visit me and deliver parts. I don't know what it is. It's light, not very heavy. Oh, this is a new belt and the wheel seals and a couple other things. So it's not the 10 ply tires. <laughs> no, it's not. I was like, boy, that's awful light for that. <laughs> Looks good. Are you going to go back in and read a book? I am. Here's your parts. I don't need them right now. Bye bye. I had to reverse a wood clamp to make it a pusher instead of a puller for the end. There's lots of materials I could have used for this deck. Three quarter inch pressure teeth are treated. I like the appearance of and it's cheap, but you can also use plastic decking or that composite stuff. You can use plastic sheets. You can use pressure treated plywood sheets. Like I said with my other spreader, I only use it a couple weeks a year and then I wash it out real good. Pressure treated ought to hold up for the rest of my life. If I were a dairy farmer spreading a load or two every day of the year, I'd probably choose a different material. And I'd probably have a new spreader if I were that dairy farmer. For the boards on the very end, I cut them to fit and I rabbited the edge of them here to fit over that angle where it sticks up. We'll put the last two boards on at once since it's tongue and groove so we can fit everything together without cutting off a tongue or a groove. A tongue, I guess. And the other side. I think after this project I'm taking a cruise to Tahiti. 
Yep, on the slow boat. Woodworking project complete. This is the old sprocket. There's a pair of them on the front of the apron chain. They're idler sprockets and as you could tell, this is worn out. So what I did is I went out and I bought some long grade eight bolts. I have a new sprocket here. The new sprockets have grease circs on them. Yay! Three quarter inch bolt slides right in here. There's some paint drip in here that binds it up. Let me try this one. So that slides right in there. And then I made new plates out of 3 8 inch steel, drilled the holes, and I'm going to weld this in here to mount the new sprocket on. Make sure we got a square here. I'm going to plug weld kind of a big plug weld on the bottom and then grind it flat. Here's my two sides. Bushing washers. New sprockets. I thought to myself Grade 8 bolts will do the trick, and then I realized I can't drill through the end of them for a cotter pin to retain the sprocket. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one bushing washer down here, that's right, and then I'm going to put one up at the top and weld it. And if I have to, have to take it apart, I'll just have to grind the weld off but I don't foresee a situation where I'm going to have to do that. This has float in it so that if the apron wanders a little bit back and forth then the sprockets can do the same. Here are the new front sprockets ready for installation. I think they came out really nice except for my cruddy paint job. What have I got left to do? Well, I got a new apron chain I got to put together and put on. And I got to reassemble the wheel hubs. I got the parts for those, put those back on. New drive belt in the front. New decals, very important. And of course, new tires. My tires came yesterday. I took a look at them. They are so thick, I don't think I could ever get them on with a set of spoons. I had hopes. I took them down the road to the tire shop and I said, well, do you have a machine to put these on? Can you put these on? And the owner said, yeah, we have a machine. His name's Ernie. He can put them on. So they're down there getting put on now. I'm going to end this video because it's getting long enough. And I've had a solid week of work on this. For those who are looking to see the animals and farm updates, they'll be coming. I've just been totally engrossed in this project and only been doing chores a couple times a day, going to market on Saturday all the other time. I've been working on this, trying to get it done, and we're almost there. I've got one more video to go, putting together the apron chain, putting the wheels on, final touches. So I hope you enjoyed this one. I hope you have a great weekend, and I'll see you next time.